Good evening and welcome to the Boise Bus. It's the post-match piss show. And I am right now your substitute host, David Logue. And as always, I'm joined by Mr. PMP himself. Terry, how are you doing, mate? Not too bad, David. Not too bad? Just not too bad? Not too just, bad. Just, I, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'll put, put it like this, I'm, I'm straight on the vodka after that. No, no messing about, there's no bear, there's no bear, nothing. I'm straight on the vodka. That was, that was tough going. Tough, tough going. Yeah, you know, uh, strange one, eh? Because obviously we get the win. It looks comfortable, and when you look at the statistics, you know the percentage and the uh, possession and the, the shooting stats, everything. But you know, get booed off at the end of the game. Yeah, it speaks volumes, mate. It speaks volumes. But before we get talking about all that, I have to get all that good stuff out of the way. So obviously, if you like what we do, give us a like, give us a share. Slag the hair, all that stuff. Become a Boise Bus member for a small cost of one ninety nine. All our content is absolutely free. This is just a way to help uh, keep the bus, keep the bus's wheels spinning. And uh, of course, uh, we appreciate everyone that does that and who should choose not to. That's absolutely fine. Like we just love to have you on commenting, giving us your your thoughts on the game and the lack of transfers and all that kind of stuff. And of course, buysports.com. So get on there, get your tasty pasty treats uh, for twelve and a half percent off by putting bus eighteen eighty eight into the checkout. Now we're hoping. We're hoping the main man, Mr. Boise, will uh, be able to join us. He is having difficulties with his router. Um, the storm, obviously, is just causing all kinds of problems. It doesn't sound like him. No, I know. I mean, he, he sent me the picture of the router, and I was like, well, I've got a couple of mates that work for said company. I shall uh, I'll see if they can sort it out. Um, they chose to ignore my messages because it is the weekend, and they're probably not interested in <laughs> helping me out. So, unfortunately, he's on his own, but... Hopefully it's just a case of turning it off and back on again. And you know, have you tried that yet? <laughs> just turn it off and turn it back on again because that usually works. And uh, if only we could do that with this team, Terry, because that's what I kind of feel like we need to do. Just turn uh, us off for ten seconds uh, and just wait. Reset, a reset. <laughs> just hit the reset it. button. It's frustrating because we thought we thought this type of performance that we've seen all too often in the first half of the season, we thought that these were in the past but they're not and I think I think this is just going to be how this season's going to play out we're never going to get any sort of real momentum build up all right yeah we're, we're six wins on the spin and we got the three points and we can't forget that but that was a game today at home to Ross County second worst team in the league really struggling we go a goal up early which settles the nerves you sit back and you think happy days you've Obviously, most people will have had one eye on the on the score from earlier. Um, didn't watch the game. I watched the last five minutes just because it was still tight, and I thought there might be there might be something to to perk up my interest, but uh, there wasn't. But that's the gap then down to two. You're going into this game, but you are expecting a victory. But when you get that first goal in the first minute, you're sort of then thinking, "Yeah, do you know what? This is just going to be what we what usually happens when we get the early goal." We go on, we dominate the game, we score goals, we create chances. Um, it just didn't pan out like that. And even even straight after that goal, you're you're sort of thinking, um, no Celtic will take a stranglehold. The next 10 minutes was was quite strange because Ross County had five or six corners in that next 10 minutes after we'd scored in the first minute. And it was a free goal that we got as well. So um Johnson's had a, a pop from outside the box and it's took a massive, massive deflection and totally wrong foot at the goalkeeper. And he probably didn't think at that stage that that was going to be the, the one moment that, that divided the sides, but it, it was. But that next 10 minutes was strange and kind of set the te the tempo for the rest of the game because it just, it just was a strange game. Ross County got lots and lots of corners and they probably created more opportunities than most teams that come to Celtic Park and definitely got more corners. And at no stage in that game did I feel we were we were safe um, that we were going to have a clean sheet. And you kind of wait and think, we'll get the second one, it'll be all right. We got the opportunity to get the second one, which we didn't take. But then it just had that awful... I just, I did anyway. I, maybe, maybe, maybe I just worry too much, but I just had this niggle that at some point in the last 15 minutes, if, we're, if we don't get a second here, they're, they're going to get a good opportunity and they actually got 
two, possibly three in the last 15 minutes and definitely one in the last couple of minutes where your heart sunk and you thought well, this was going to be more drop points. And I don't know what the problem is. I mean, we'll go through the game, but I think that there's there's definitely a problem. And the problem seems to be more at home than away because it's, it's at home that we've dropped the majority of points that we've dropped this season. It's at home where we struggled to... To deliver the the performances, we usually we usually swap these teams to one side, and for whatever reason, that's not happening. And it, it is worrying and it's concerning. Um, thankfully, three points, five point gap again. That will probably come back down to two again. But I, I think the overriding thoughts today are this is this is going to go right to the wire this season, and we need to be prepared for that. I I can't see I can't see other teams taking taking anything. Off Rangers, I just don't see it happening. Um, we we might even have to win these last two um, games against Rangers as well because on today's performance and what we've seen, there's a chance we could drop points against some of the lesser teams. And if if the league was just based on the matches against the other teams, we'd actually be behind because that's that's where we've dropped points. It's it's a, it's funny because like you said, we seem to be struggling more more home and obviously. A lot of it is to do with the way the, the teams that we're playing against are setting up, you know. But we have, but that's Roger's job to figure out a way of getting around that, you know. And yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm looking at the stats here. We had 70% possession. We had a total of 17 shots to their seven, only seven on target. We had 683 passes to their 280. Uh, and according to Sky Sports, there was only one clear cut chance made today, and that was Ross County. And that's damning, mate, because it's like, like you said, like Mark said it perfectly in the in the group chat. It's toothless. It's 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 toothless performances. We're getting we've got the result, but it seems to be where we're really struggling to find a way to break these teams down because of arguably the style of play that Rogers wants to play. Now again, possession based football, keeping hold of the ball is great, but you've really got to start doing something with that possession, and. I think you're right. I feel like eventually, again, we're just not gonna we're not gonna get that we're not gonna get that chance. I mean, like you said, the goal that we scored today was complete. It was a complete fluke. I think Burnaby puts the ball into the box, takes a deflection of the defender, comes back. Does it? Callum McGregor takes a shot. And Burnaby, Burnaby, put, Burnaby finds a low cross in, and it finds its way to Abara, who has a shot that's blocked. Then it comes back out to Johnson, who hits a shot, and then there's then there's a, Again, a two-minute VAR review to see if Abada was onside or not whenever the, the ball got to him. But yeah, a, 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 an absolute freak goal. And it was probably fitting that that was the, the difference between the sides because that's the kind of game that it was. Um, very, very disappointing. But let's let's not... I mean, we're talking as if we've we've dropped points here, but I think it's more... <laughs> it's more... It's more... We could have dropped points. We, we could. And those possession stats... That it wasn't good possession today. It was just possession for possession's sake. It wasn't yeah. incisive. It wasn't incisive. The tempo wasn't the same as what we'd seen in some of those other games. It was lethargic. It was pedestrian. And I actually, I actually think Ross County played really, really well. But it, it's it, it wasn't it wasn't that kind of game, David. Where you know they're camped in and they're just clearing their lines. It, it genuinely wasn't. They they had. I know the stats maybe don't show up, but they they had plenty of ball in in dangerous positions and just the sheer number of corners they have. And you know when when a high ball comes into our box, it's panic stations. And the header that they got where the guy hit the bar. I mean, we've seen this we've seen this movie so many times. Joe Hart's coming out for balls and he's getting absolutely nowhere near them. And the guy should score. I mean, he's got a header from point blank range and bangs it against the bar. He probably he probably wasn't actually expecting it to come to him because you're thinking a big goalkeeper coming out, he's just going to get this. But as we know, Joe Hart doesn't do that. He doesn't. He comes he comes out like Superman and flies past the ball. And I just I just felt that I just felt they were going to score today and that they had opportunities. And Hart was in the mouth in the last couple of minutes where the the guy the guy makes a run. Uh, there was a guy who made a run down the right hand side. He just he just left Burnaby in his wake. Turnbull had no pace to get to him either. And those last five to ten minutes, like it's a Celtic hanging on at home to Ross County. And it's uh it's concerning. It's concerning. And I suppose we well 
with a few days to with a few days to try and find some players that are going to come in and make a difference for us. And I don't know if the booze at the end will will make any difference in that. They, they probably won't, to be honest, because I think what we've seen in this window was there's there's absolutely no plan. This window has got whatever number of days left. Four days, is it? Wednesday it shuts. Four days. Mm, from, yeah, yeah. Four, four days from tomorrow. Celtic had no plan getting into this window. There was no the the four quality players that the manager wants. Nobody else wants them. He might want them, but the the people the people above him don't want them. There was if there'd been a plan, we'd have had the players in. And even if players come in this week. Are we really going to get players that are going to be better than what we've got? I suppose it probably wouldn't be hard, but it's, I just don't. I just don't see what the, what what the, from Rogers has come back. What's come out of his mouth and what we've seen are just complete polar opposites. What he's talking about, we want to make a dent in Europe. Then what we've seen is complete opposite. He wants to bring in quality players. What we see is complete opposite. Everything he's saying, none of it's really playing out. And um, actions speak louder than words, Terry. Yeah, yeah, and this, you know, if if the title race is tight, which I think it is definitely going to be, do you know what? It'll be enjoyable if we go and win it, and we'll forget about how bad the season was. But this this is going to go right to the wire. It really, really is, and and you can see you can see Rangers are still spending money that they they probably don't have, um. To try and wrestle this away from us, and I think we're just we're just trying to do the absolute bare minimum to to get over the line. And do you know what? See, see if we do blow it, fucking slap it up the board, David, because it's you know they'll have brought this on themselves. And I don't know, I don't know. I, I'm maybe overreacting. Maybe am I? No, I don't think you are. This is the thing. Sometimes, like, so I think it's safe to say that we all know. The reputations of some of us guys now on the pod, if you watch us enough, we've all kind of got our own takes and the way we, we think. And some of us are a bit more uh, patient than others, and some are a wee bit more, uh, as you could, a bit more, I don't know, up and down. So, the likes of like Connor and Vegan today uh, were quite up in arms again when we seen Burnaby was in the starting lineup, and totally understandable because we've not seen him for months. That's, that's the strange one, isn't it, David? These players yeah. just appear from cold storage. And we all know that Burnaby's not good enough, but it also isn't realistic to expect him to come out of... I was, I fully knew here every six weeks good. and expect him to go in and do well. Yeah, I, was, I, I wasn't I was surprised to see him on the team today because we've seen Rodgers has been picking guys out of nowhere uh, all the time. So I was when we were all talking about, oh, scale should move into left, but... I quietly was thinking to myself, we're just going to see Benny back in the team because that's what's going to happen. Now, what I was getting to was, I, I had said in the chat, look, guys, I know we're all fucking a bit doom and gloom about the transfer window, but if we are worrying about beating that Ross County team with that lineup today, then we're in a bigger shit than I thought. And you know what? I'm kind of pulling back on what I said now because when you see, we, we did struggle. We did struggle today and it's like, you know, you still really understanding when, when, when Steam's pouring it on his ears and uh, about about this transfer window and, and that lineup, I thought, come on, we should, even the Burnaby, the team, he's not, he should surely be fine enough to, to deal with this Ross County side, who are, like you said, the second worst team in the league. And he was left for dust how many times today? It's it's a damning, it's, it's just damning, mate. I don't, I, there's no other really words to describe it. It's, it's you know, Greg Taylor, it's, you know, obviously, uh, Punk Duck is. Um, been pushing to get somebody in better than him for a while now uh, and I felt he was starting to get into a bit of a game uh, and because we had no choice but to get better because right now it's like well you don't really have any competition and I, I started to think that the board were going to just forget all about this left back situation now they're saying they're reporting that oh we've turned all our attention to the left back and it's like so there's like you said so there has been no plan there has been no plan for this uh this transfer double. Let's get let's get back on track just now. Yes. Let's talk about some of the players that we're playing today. Um, Lewis Palma is getting a lot of heat in the in the chat today, and I think rightfully so. I think it's it's been coming for a while now that this boy has been living off of numbers uh, rather than maybe performances. He's now there's no denying. Obviously, he's contributed a fair bit 
with goal contributions. However, I think it's masking a lot of deficiencies in his game. And when he's not putting the ball in the back of the net or assisting uh, to goals, I think his deficiencies are quite obvious. And I think a lot of a lot of people in the chat are, are alluding to that today. Um, yep, there's Stephen Smith. He's one saying Palmer was dreadful today. Um, yeah, Lewis Palmer won good game in four by Chris Fraser. It's, I think he needs dropped, mate. But the problem is we don't seem to have the players there to to drop him. Now, let, let's talk about this penalty today. This is the guy that's meant to be a dead ball specialist and I've yet to see anything special about any of his, his dead balls. Can we walk us through this penalty today, Terry? Yeah, so we get the penalty. Um, I, think, I think it was a penalty kick. There was a bit of an argument, but it was um, the player felt McGregor went down a little bit easy. But once you get it, you've you've got to score it. But same old, same old story. I mean, I had absolutely no confidence that we were going to score it just based on on our record with penalty kicks. And this guy gets up, and the penalty that he hits just it just epitomised the whole performance. It was just a lethargic, pathetic penalty and the goalkeeper saves it. Then we get to retake it. I thought I thought originally it was because the goalkeeper had come off his line, but it was given for encroachment and three of the Ross County players had sort of made the run in too early. Um, to be honest, I, I didn't even want us to get it again. I just thought we've, we've missed it. He's missed it. It was a shit penalty. We don't deserve another go. Then we get another go. And I know I've said this previously, but with, with just how pathetic that kick was, I still think the captain has to step in there and take that ball away from the lad and take responsibility. And he didn't. I mean, I, I, I actually, so I says to my dad, we're sitting watching, I says, if, if Palmer takes this again, he'll miss again. I, I genuinely think, the, the first attempt was so pathetic. I just think the captain has to go in there, take the ball, take responsibility, put the ball in the net and put the point safe. And your man goes up again and hits the exact same penalty again. So if you take those two and the other ones that he's taken, I think he's taken five or else six and he's missed half of them. And I think that's our that's our record over the last two, two or three years. We, we miss half the penalties we get. And at some point later in the season, with it, with it, as I'm going to predict with it being really, really tight, some of these misses could be the difference. This, this could this could even go down to goal difference at the end. And some of these misses could be really, really costly. Um, I just don't know where we go next because we just keep going around player to player to player and nobody's able to put the ball in the net. It's, it's, it should be the easiest thing to do, just go up and score from, from the penalty spot. Why is the striker not taking it? I mean, now, I know Kyogo missed one penalty when he, he, he took, took it one against Kilmarnock. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, but come on, he's the striker. Like... Well, absolutely. He, sh he should be, he sh yeah, he, he should be taking them or or the captain. If, if, he, nobody, fancies that... it, if nobody fancies it, then the captain has to take responsibility. I can't believe nobody in that team doesn't fancy taking a penalty, Terry. It just, that no. blows my mind. And any any centre forward wants to score as many goals as he can. Any other mm -hmm. team, it's centre forwards demanding the penalties. Absolutely. And I remember, I remember it clear as day that eh, Kyogo penalty, and I knew he was going to miss it because. He was walking up like a timid little boy, and then they're all they're all going, Oh, you take it, you take it. And he's turning around going, Nah, nah no, no, you take it, you take nah, right, okay, he takes it. And he turns it, he goes, I don't like it. Tell me I'd miss it. And that was it. And I'm going, there was no confidence in the build up of the penalty. It was the one of the worst penalties I've seen a striker take. And it's like, right, you're not gonna at least next time go, right, next time I'll just put the laces through it because I know I'm capable of that. And it's just it's just beggars belief that we, we don't seem to have a player that's that confident. Yeah, I'm surprised Riley hasn't put his hand up for one. You know, you're looking at somebody who can, you know, a nice clean strike of the ball. Maybe Bernardo will have a go. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, well, I, I don't even get excited anymore when we get a penalty because I don't expect us to score it. No. No. But no, it didn't no. cost us today, but there will be there will be a day where one of these penalty misses is going to cost us points. But it's, it's it's fine margins, Terry. These are the fine margins that win or lose titles when it's when we've let our biggest rivals back in. Back into another, this, this another thing. fine margin, mate, is Matt O'Reilly pulls up a couple of minutes after that and signals oh. signals that he, he's probably going to need to come off. He, he needs two players to prop him up, so something's something's popped out in his lower back, and 
something as simple as that. An injury to Matt O'Reilly, that could be the, that could be the difference in the in the league and no and no league. Do you know what I mean? And for all intents and purposes, he looked as if he was going to be come off coming off and it was going to be some kind of muscle injury. But I don't know. I don't know. He didn't look comfortable the rest of the game after you could the, the camera pan to him. He was doing stretches and he was trying different things to try and it almost free up whatever the problem was. So let's let's hope let's hope it's nothing. It's nothing serious. It would just be it would just be a kind of Celtic thing if if you're knocking down big money bids for him, um, and then and then you lose him for the rest of the season for 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 an injury or something. But again, these are the things we need to be prepared for. If we lose a Matt O'Reilly, we need to be able to deal with that and still get the job done. If we lose a Kyogo again, we need to be able to get the job done. Um, I don't know. Now, obviously, uh, I noticed that Rocco Vata was on the bench again today. Yeah, he was. He wasn't called upon. Uh, a lot in the chat saying that maybe Kyogo, uh, obviously Kyogo was a bit anonymous again today. Uh, would it have been worth the risk of, of taking Kyogo off or Vata? Now, there was a healthy debate in the chat with uh, Brown Warrior. I don't, I don't think he's in the chat at the minute. I've not seen his name pop up yet. However, he was saying that, obviously, we need to be seeing the guys like Vata get more opportunities. Now he's calling for, you know, we're 3-0 up and cruising at 45 minutes, so that's when we let these boys get a game. And obviously the argument is, well, we we aren't as fans really willing to take that risk that when it's this fine a margin to put, throw on an 18-year-old striker up front. But was that, was this today the opportunity to give him, was this the, the opportunity to give him the game? When it's, Kyogo, it's clearly not working for Kyogo today to be chuck on a boy who's probably got no fear at all 18, they've got no fear. They just want to play with their heart on their sleeve and uh, and I think he's the kind of boy to do that. Big, strong-looking lad these days. Uh, he got, got his goal against Bucky Thistle, albeit it was Bucky Thistle, but a wee bit of confidence scoring on his uh, on his debut for the for the first team this season. Uh, could he could he have been the difference maker? Would it have been worth throwing him on? Or is that, is that again, oh, we, we just can't risk that at this, this time? I'm I'm not sure it's the risk element. My my thoughts are on it. It wouldn't have mattered who we brought on as a centre forward because there was no there was no service. And you know we've talked about Kyogo being uh, anonymous for for long long spells, but he still is he still is that match winner. He still is that um, he's the, the person most likely to produce a, a moment of quality in the box and get you the goal. We we've seen it. And you know, we talked about we talked about his drought ahead of the Rangers game and. And then he produces that finish. He he is still capable of that, but it, the service it, it, it had absolutely nothing to go at today. The yeah. you know the ball's coming into the box. It wouldn't have mattered who you're in there. Um, I don't I don't think if Val comes on it, other than if he goes and tries to make something happen for him, for himself, we weren't we weren't getting enough balls in. We weren't getting quality balls into the box that were creating chances for for the centre forward and. I think I think that's what's missing from last season. We've seen it a little bit in the last few games when we've been playing a bit better, but we're just not creating anywhere near the number of opportunities and good opportunities where you're likely to score. And even if we look at the the, the, the two games against Rangers where Keogo has has been the match winner with two uh, two moments of there's been two moments of absolute quality that you know the the likelihood of him scoring for from both of those chances was probably um, low, but they're the they're the two goals that won those two games and are the the two moments that still give us a slight cushion at the top of the league. But we're not creating guilt edge chances for our centre forward, and that's that's the concerning bit. Of course, we've seen a debut today, Terry. Um... Our only January transfer signing so far in Nicholas Kuhn. He's gotten over that toothache. He uh, starts out on the left, uh, obviously for Palma. The guy now he's to say he can play across um, the front three, predominantly plays on the right, but he starts out on the left. What did you make of his uh, his debut today? Not much really. We didn't see too much of him. Uh, did he did he leave any sort of impression on you today? A couple of guys in the chat saying he looks a bit lightweight. I mean, there's no getting around. He is quite a small lad. Quite, he's not. He's not a strong looking boy. Uh, looks quick. He looks quick. Uh, he looks, looks quick. quick, and he looks like he wants. He's, he wants to drive at the at the 
at the defence and, and you know try and make something happen. But time will tell. Go, time will yeah. tell on him, Dave. Obviously, it's his first game. He's come on for yeah. what did he what did he get? Roughly about half an hour, something like that. Something like that. Um, yeah. He'd one good run down the left hand side. I mean, I'm not I'm not expecting big things of this guy to be honest. I just my gut feel my gut feel without ever seeing him play my gut feel is he will be at a similar level as all of the wingers that we've already got i'm I'm not expecting him to be able to come in and be be a game changer i just i don't see it i just don't have that expectation i hope i'm i really hope i'm wrong i hope he becomes a first team regular i hope he nails down a slot i just feel the profile of just look just looking at on profile and on paper without seeing the guy play I just expect that he'll he'll just be at the same level as what we've already got. He'll have some attributes that are really really good, but he'll have other attributes that are not good at all. And he'll he'd probably be one of those players who looks brilliant one minute, frustrates the life out of you the next. A bit like the ones that we've already got, Palma, Naida, and and all the rest. I hope I really I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But in that market that we're we're shopping in for these guys. If you keep doing what you always do, you you'll keep getting what you've always got, and I think we'll we'll get someone who looks good one minute and garbage the next. But I think we'll find that. Well, you know, we're going to get that with like Lisa Winger, especially if we're only spending three million on them. That's, yeah, yeah. That's let's exactly let's not ju- let's not judge him without giving the guy a yes, giving no, the guy a good, a good go of it. So that's it. Because I mean, let's be honest. Like I remember when Palmer made his debut, we were all going, "What's this guy all about?" Uh, and then he starts looking like an unbelievable player. Now he's kind of went back to being that. What's this guy all about? Sort of player. So even then, even when I get, we'll get the same. Today, as, as frustrating as he was today, and as poor as he was, he did still have one run where he cut in, beat a few. He did still have one effort where the keeper had to pull out a great save. He, he does have qualities, but he also has a lot of deficiencies. Um, a player that came on today. Um, near the end, of course, was David Turnbull. He came on for the 89th minute. Uh, what? Uh, what's your record here? Why has he brought him on? Now, this is a guy who said he's, he's, he's not going to lose any sleep if he doesn't sign a new contract. Um, we had the likes of Odin Thiago Holm that had an alright game against Bucky Thistle the other day. Is, is, is it not worth giving that boy that... I know it's very little time to, to finish up the game, but the, he looks like a tidy enough player. Is there a reason why he's bringing David Turnbull on a player that looks like he's got one foot out the door to, to, to finish off this game rather than giving the likes of Odin home. I don't know. That time, it's, you know? A strange, it's a strange one because I, I felt you're making a substitution at that time. To me, you're making one to try and tighten it up and see this yeah. game out because we we weren't comfortable. We were, we were not comfortable at all. And Turnbull is an attack-minded player and he's not someone who's going to break up the play. He's not going to be someone that's going to sit as a screener and and make it make it harder for the other team to get through, which home is a wee bit more adept at. And as you say, it doesn't feel as if David Turnbull's gonna be here um six months down the line. So yeah, a bit of bit of a strange substitution to be honest. Um the, the, the see the thing about the Bernabe um selection today, I, I fully expect it skills to slot in at left back and there's a few reasons for that. Um, Curry Vickers was back he needed to go into the team Navrovsky had been playing in Carter Vickers' absence but then he then found himself back on the bench today I, I expected Navrovsky to partner Carter Vickers and Scales to slot in at left back um, so I, I wasn't expecting to see Burnaby come back into the team and I felt I felt reasons for, for doing that were you were going to get more minutes into Navrovsky's legs you were going to get Carter Vickers back into the game and you were going to be able to do that without putting Scales out of the team and I actually think Scales is a better left back than Burnaby by some by some distance um, Scales might even be the best left back that we have at the club if, I, if I'm being honest and I don't think I don't think what you would have lost from an attacking perspective with skills, I, I think skills, skills would be fine going forward from left back. Um, I just, I just don't know why he he brought Burnaby back in completely from the cold. Whenever he he could have kept Navrovsky in the team and got legs, you know, got minutes into his legs because Carter Vickers, 
Carter Vickers' injury record this season would suggest that he's going to be in and out between now and the end of May. And we're going to need Novorovsky to play quite a bit. But if he's sitting on the bench for games, only getting a few minutes, I kind of thought it was a good opportunity to give him to give him another 90 minutes and have Carter Vickers play and, and have those two playing alongside each other in case that's a scenario that needs to happen at some point. But for whatever reason, he's decided to go for Burnaby. Um, strange one. Strange one from my perspective. I think, I think it's maybe a shot window thing. Just, it yeah, it, poss- it possibly is. But um, just some of the decisions from the manager just this season are, are absolutely baffling. And that Turnbull one, to be honest, I didn't think much about it at the time. But now, now when you've mentioned it, you've got home, who's a more defensive player, and you're bringing on someone. I mean, if you're going to put Turnbull on at any stage today... I would start with Turnbull because this is the type of game where Turnbull excels. Do you know what I mean? Mm, yeah. uh, a home game against the team towards the bottom. If Turnbull starts that game, he maybe scores two two goals today. It just it, it just is strange and it's. I know, uh, but could, Terry, but could you, you, if you started them, the question is why is he dropped Bernardo for a boy that looks like he's out, out the door? I know that. <laughs> like it's, it's, but this is the situation that we're in. We're playing guys that we know are probably not going to be here. Uh, over guys that the manager clearly doesn't trust that he brought in in the summer. Where are we at, David, with the guys that are away in Asia? I haven't been following that at all. But I think I think both teams struggled, but they sneaked through. So the, the boys are likely to be away for at least another week and maybe more. Yeah, it's funny, right? Because I've not obviously been able to keep... I mean, Regan's keeping us up to date in the chat. I don't know if, if he's watched it um, or how he's watched it, but I've not had a... I mean, I've been keeping an eye just kind of on Twitter, but from what I gather, South Korea have... Um, Kind of got through on the skin of their teeth, I think. I think they, they only needed a draw to qualify, but they almost blew it. Uh, Son being the difference maker for them. Obviously, O's been getting some game time. I don't know how well he's been playing. I don't think Yang's had any minutes. Um, and Japan have underwhelmed. They've got through to the next round. But I was reading an article. You can take this with a pinch of salt. But, but I, was reading, I was reading an article that was saying that just before the Asian Cup kicked off, that Japan was the most informed national team in the world at the time. Uh, but obviously, you can go by obviously the, the, who they've been playing against. Uh, you have to take that into consideration. Um, but they've, they've, I think they've underwhelmed this, uh, this campaign. They've obviously got through, but again, I don't think they have performed as well as they were hoping. Hatati, I think, played the full game in their last he's, game, and he's I think the key he one. He's the key one. Well. I would like to back. I would like yeah, to Maeda's not getting much game time from what I've gathered. He's, not, he's certainly not starting. Um, I think when we, I think we see with Maeda, Maeda's got his deficiencies, and obviously can infuriate you at times. But I think when you, I think you see the difference in the side's energy uh, when he's not in the team, uh, and of course we, we desperately need Hatati back playing. Uh, but of course, he, he wasn't exactly firing on all cylinders at the beginning of the season. But I think we are missing that creative spark. I think he, I'd like to see I them hurry and get back. Could, I think he could he could be a big player for us in the in the last six months, um, five months, whatever it is. Especially when you see today O'Reilly pulling up. Um, we need to have we need to have that really really strong option um, in that midfield. And Hitati, once he gets up to speed. I just think he brings he brings a real energy to the side, and the fact that he's not played much might work in our, in our favour as well because um, he'd be fresh. And if 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 you know if, if he comes back from this competition on a high, because um, I haven't watched any of the games, but I did read a report that said he, he he had quite a good game. So maybe he gets to play and they get to the latter stages, and he comes back with a lot of confidence and. You know, as, as much as Bernardo's come in and he took a bit of time to settle in, then he's had he's had a run of good performances. That might level off again as well because he, you know, he's a young player and that level that he hit there um, for a few games it, that you know he, he, he might he might regress a little bit and he he kind of you know he might not be someone that we can rely on to play every single game. Um, for us. So I, I think getting Hitati back, getting a proper fit, confident Rio Hitati back will, will make a big difference for us. Mr McGinley's just something to the chat that he says I could have left after two minutes today. 
and then I've seen all I needed to today. That was a long day, turgid viewing, albeit the points are on the board. Uh, you've summed it up perfectly. Yeah. Oh, I think. Uh, no, I, I, I did skip a substitution. Uh, obviously, Carter Vickers was taken off for yeah. Roski, who arguably was, you know, could you could say was a bit unlucky to lose his spot today. Was it the right decision to bring Carter Vickers back so quickly? I think he uh, could have pulled his hamstring chasing back that, um, the attacker. He was no longer taken off after that. It might have been a precaution, I don't know. Um, I'm just worried that we keep making the same mistake with Carter Vickers and we're know, rushing him back. He's either fit or he's not. You know, we're bringing him back and then we're substituting him, which means he probably isn't right. And if he's not right, why are we playing him when we've got Navrovsky who... who he's not put a foot wrong for me, mate. He, 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 and as, going back to your other point, Navrovsky should be fine at home to Ross County. No, he looks he looks okay. He, um, he, he looks he looks all right. He's quite mobile. Um, he's, he's probably not your big... I don't know. He's not just as physical and physically intimidating centre back and Carter Vickers as much as he's he's built like a like a French he, he's quite short for a centre back Carter mm. Vickers but um no I, I have no issue with Navrovsky. I mean he, he's looked fine I just I just felt today was an opportunity for him to to play in 90 minutes and he probably was unfortunate to find himself back on the bench especially when you look at the quality of a player that we brought in to play instead of him so there you go. CCV was holding his leg when he went off today. He's, he's, um, he's not right. He's not, been right. he's not been right at any stage. That's at any stage of the season. We seem to keep making the same mistake. If he, you know, if he wasn't right, there was no need to start him. Yeah, um, Shell, Shell, take that's a brilliant name. Uh, I think it was just precaution why CCV went off. But yeah, this is a thing. I, I'm worried that we're having to take him off for precautions. Like if he's not. I, I, I'd like to say just let's just make sure he's fit. Um, I think we give this. I think there's enough trust there that the Rocky and Scales could have handled ninety minutes straight day. Um, I haven't seen anything to suggest that Rocky has been a poor signing. I think he's actually maybe been one of the better signings. He's just been unfortunate with a couple of injuries at the start of the season. Not and then obviously Scales is just his his rise from the, the ashes of Aberdeen has been. Uh, it's been monumental. Well, he was excellent again today. He made a he made a last ditch challenge towards the end as well, where where he had to get back to to stop the guy getting a shot away. Uh, he'd one moment where he sort of took his eye off the ball and passed it. Uh, had, a, had a really poor pass, but again, just his levels his levels have been excellent. And the only time Navrovsky's looked uncomfortable was the first five minutes when he replaced Welsh. Um, in the game against Rangers, there I was I was concerned just in those five minutes he was like a rabbit in the headlights, but he completely he turned it. You know he he was composure personified after that, and and he he looks he looks like a reliable option. He just he definitely does. Yeah, I'd agree with that. He does look a player. Uh, Liam Greenlaw, <laughs> ninety nine pull-ups in the pitches. One looked terrible. Well, is 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 has Liam has Liam touching something here? Because I've talked about how this season more than any of previous ones in recent times we've struggled at home, and there isn't a lot of grass on it. And is that contributing in any way? Is is that making is that is that making it more difficult for us? Is it's is the pitch? It's embarrassing. It's, it's, well, it's as as, Bo as Boise would say, the optics aren't great, um, <laughs> and I know I know that there's been a real bad spell of weather in Scotland over the last few weeks and stuff. But that pitch hasn't been looking great for a few months now, and it it can't it can't help when the style that the manager wants you to play is pretty much ball on the ground if there's not a lot of grass on the pitch. Mm -hmm. But I've, I've no idea. Do you remember? Was it not the last time Rogers was here that there was? There was some chat like that the pitch was poisoned or something. Something they'd done. The pitch ended up getting poisoned, and it was bit parts of it were turning black and all sorts of stuff. Um, I don't know why it's. I don't know why it's worse. I don't know why it's in the condition that it's in now. I don't know how it's got worse this year than any any of the previous years. Because I don't think any. I don't. I don't think the women play on it or anything. Sure, they, they did one match whenever the they were trial and the. I don't think it's your Celtic end type thing, but I don't mm -hmm. think the women play on it regularly. No, I don't think so. 
No, I don't, I don't really understand. I mean, I'm not green, but somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. Obviously, the the weather certainly won't have helped. But I mean, when you look at these these other big clubs, they don't seem to have this this issue down south. They obviously, they've got a lot more money to spend on their um, on the pitch than we do. But you know, we've we've got enough to look after that pitch. Uh, and you see, some of these clubs in in, in lower leagues have have beautiful pitches to play on and. I don't, I don't think it's an excuse, David. I really, I don't think it's an excuse because, I mean, we're obviously just, you know, it might be different if you're on it, but it doesn't appear, it doesn't appear that the ball's bobbling all over the place. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it down to a performance it's against it. Bounces and things, um, no. you would say it's making a difference. It seems to be playing okay. It just doesn't look good, and it's just not, it's just not a good look for the the chances. No, no, I would, I would, I would agree with you there. It's not it's certainly. I wouldn't put our performances. Down to the pitch, like that. We're skating the barrel there, looking for excuses for yeah. for a lackluster performances. I'll call them. Because uh, end of the day, I feel like we're, I feel like we're talking about a defeat today, Terry. And what we get in the comments later that we're miserable bastards, which whether it's football or not, I no, am I miserable. Think, I think just <laughs> got to call it as you see it, because there was very fine margins there. If if you know if if Ross County had scored one of those chances, which they very 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 might well have done towards the end, then. You know, we're in that, we're having that discussion again where you've dropped another two points at home. And I think it's 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 when you've won the game to be able to critique it in such a way that you're you're covering the deficiencies that you've seen in front of you. And, you know, it, it was more luck than anything else that we didn't con- concede towards him. Joe Hart made a good save, but the he kind of he got a hand to it to stop it. He's pushed it to the side and you're just waiting for the Ross County guy to go in and roll it into the empty net, but Hart recovers and and makes a save. And again, Hart again, he, he, it's a bit like Palm. It's a bit like a lot of these players. They're they they produce good moments, and then they produce really really bad moments. And that just seems to be how it's been from from the start of this season. Um, but yes, let's 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 take the positives from it. We're six games in a row with victories. We're now embarking on. This spell of fixtures, which we had again at the start, where we're going on a run of um, more difficult away games. Now, let's hope it plays out the same way as it did at the start of the season, where we go through those away games and we actually get the points, produce reasonable performances, and make sure that when we end this run of fixtures, when we go into the split, that we're still sitting at the very, very least where we're at now with a two-point advantage. But I, I don't see it being one of these seasons, David, where, where we, we go off into the distance. I just can't see that happening this year. I think this is going down to the last the last two or three weeks of the season, maybe even the last day. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's mad to think we're that. Not, we're not going to run away with it. We're, there's no way this team playing the way we are, there's no way we're going we're gonna to run away with this. I disagree with you, mate. This is the thing, and it's mad to think because at one point it did look like we were. But Rangers seen where the problem lied with them, and they did something about it. And whether you like it or not, that manager is coming, and he has get he's getting results with that same squad that Mickey Bill wasn't. And and they're pushing the boat out for him now in January. No, I don't well, know. Yeah, who, I don't know who they've brought in or anything about. It. They may turn out to be shy, but at least oh, at yeah. least they're active. They're active. The optics you know I mean? again. They're trying. They're trying to make something happen, and it, it doesn't. It doesn't appear that we are now. I think. I think we'll bring. We'll bring someone in somewhere. Um, we'll probably bring in a lone left back. That's probably. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the only move that comes in is someone on loan at left back. And if that's the case. That is, uh, it's an absolutely disgraceful window. And again, it just flies in the face of everything that's coming out of the manager's mouth. Ever since he was discussed, I think it might have even been the last post-match press that he did. I can't help but feel that we will see on deadline day a Jamie Vardy coming in. I, I do think that. I, 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 I just can't get out of my head now. And I'm... I'm there's two sides to me. There's a part of it, it's like, yeah, what you probably would do a job up here, uh, but it's still, it's it's not what you're wanting to see. A 36, 37 year old striker that's his best years are behind him now, and it just looks like we're just kind of panicking, like just get just get Jimmy Vardy in, and it's like it almost feels like the um, 
Who's the boy that they signed uh, a couple years ago? Uh, uh, well, uh, the four, yeah, kind of. No, but the other boy that we used to play for Arsenal, the Welsh guy, was it Rams? Um, Rams I don't know, Rams. It would, I would kind of almost feel like that to me. Uh, it just feel to me like Ian Wright and those embarrassing. Aye, just, just a, like, I'll just get anybody. It's a, it's a big name, it'll appease the fans, but in reality, the Fred, fans Freddie Lundberg, do you remember that one? Freddie Lundberg, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and a big, and it'll be big wages. This is what we'll have like we've been talking about. We've got seven million in the bank to go and buy a player at a decent amount of money, and we'll waste it on high wages on players like Jamie Vardy. <laughs> I just, David, I just would love, and I will neither you or me or anyone on the Boise bus will ever be lucky enough, but I just would actually love to actually understand what the plan is. What when Rogers has come back, when there's been meetings with the recruitment people and the manager and everybody in this room, I'd love to hear that conversation to actually see how it plays out. What are we actually trying to do? And do you know what? We could be totally wrong and those guys could be working round the clock and just being really unlucky and not getting things over the line. But I really don't think it's like that. I just don't think there's a plan. I think we're there's no forward planning. We just go, we just probably go from day to day, week to week, we'll see what happens, we'll see how the results are. If if we have a bad result, then we'll react to it. Or, you know, there, there should be a plan. If, if there was a plan after the summer window, then proper business would have been done in January. And I don't, I don't, I don't care about this, it's a difficult window. There's two windows, one of them's January, the other one's the summer. There's players have been getting signed all over world football during January. There's got to be football players that Celtic can bring in that are better than the ones that we've got. There just has to be. It's it doesn't. I, I, I don't. I'm not interested in. It's a difficult month. There's only there is a difficult window. There's only there only are two. They're both difficult. If you don't want to spend any cash, it reminds me. You no, know what Celtic remind me. Remind me of my my mum. So my mum moseys around the shops. My mum could go and shop for a full day, right? And quite often she does and comes back with nothing. And the reason she comes back with nothing is she only wants to buy items that she feels are worth more than what she's paying for them. And I think that's Celtic. We just we just want to go and get players that we think are potentially worth more than what we're going to pay, pay and hope we then reap a profit somewhere down the line. The Haksibanovic one really, really hammers that home for me. Haksibanovic was the most on and ball signing you could possibly have had he's not that type of player he's a luxury player who um doesn't have a great work rate um if you put him in a team where everybody you know and, and give him the ball and you're ahead in games he'd probably look good but there's absolutely no way he was someone that Postacoglu picked to be part of his vision the only reason we signed that guy is because we felt we were getting a five million pound player for 1.5 million pound exploiting a situation that was going on um, in the country that he was playing in and then hope that we can then punt him on at some point and make a profit on him. That's the only reason we signed him. And that's just how I feel Celtic's approach to signing players is. Let's go and look for people that we might get a little bit cheaper than they actually are, feel as if we've got a bargain and then make a profit. And that's just my that's my little mum moseying about the charity shops looking for something that somebody has <laughs> potentially undervalued, but yet every single day coming back home with absolutely nothing. Or if she does come home with something, it actually ends up being something that nobody else actually really wanted. And that's that's Celtic in a nutshell. I don't think he's I think he's struggling at Stoke as well. I don't think I think I don't think he's getting game time there now. I think he, he had his opportunity like he did with us and he didn't take it. And I think uh, the fans at Stoke would be quite happy to send them back to us. But um, he's probably one of those players. If, he, if, he, if he's playing football in the street with his mates, he probably looks like you know an absolute world beater. But in in, in the professional game, you need so many. You need so, so much more to your to your armour. And he's a, he is a talented guy. There's no doubt about that. But um, I, it's a, it's just it's just a strange sign, and, and it just it just really really makes me feel that that's why we're buying players. It's it's all about trying to get a bargain and trying to think about future profit and things like that. It's not actually buying players who fit into the style that whatever manager that's in place actually actually wants. I think uh, 
RMCL summed up. I thought the exact same thing he has as another Yeti. Just a guy that's been at a Premier League club, so therefore commands a, a reasonable Aye. price. Uh, didn't we'll make it at West Ham. Well, maybe pull something out of the bag, David. Maybe we'll be surprised. Um, get, just get your thoughts. See that. See the Callagher one. It's not. Those rumours aren't going away. And no. I, I think I think it's a fanciful one. And the only the only way I think this happens is if that lad has an emotional tie to Celtic and he makes it happen. He'll have made plenty of money as a as a backup player at Liverpool and. You need to remember as well, this lad's 25 now, so he's probably midway through his, his career. And yeah. he's, pro he's probably played less games than Nat Phillips, and the, and we know we know what Nat Phillips was like. But I, I kind of feel as if we've, we've missed a trick on this one because we had his older brother at Celtic for mm -hmm. four years. Um, his older brother, his name was Fakra Kelleher, and he was at Celtic between 2012 and 16, I think. And it was only in 2015 then that his younger brother um, went to Liverpool. So you would imagine if we had him at the club, we must have been aware of a younger brother coming through who had the talent for the likes of Liverpool to to want to get on him. And I, I don't feel as if you've maybe missed the boat on it. But if there is if there is an emotional tie there, and that lad has some kind of desire or dream to play for Celtic and Celtic's his team. That's probably the only way I see this happening. Um, as, yeah, as but uh, Liverpool aren't going to give a shit if he's got no, a... I know. Well, I know that. Million I know that. You know, I know that. They want 20 million, they're not going to go, oh, he can't yeah, get it. You can go for six since you know you love the club. <laughs> I know. No, 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 no. I know that. I know that. If they, if they get an offer of 20 from somewhere else, they'll they'll take that. And I could see him at a... I could see him a, a mid-table, lower, or even a promoted Premier League team next year. Potentially. That's what I see him. That's what I see him. I, you know what? I, I, a more realistic signing for me would be going for Angus Gunn uh, at uh, yeah. Norwich. And then in Norwich, they get promoted or whatever, and they go for a killer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To, to, that's kind of... I would... I'm not saying. I mean, I would be quite happy with Angus Gunn. I think he's done all right for Scotland. He, 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 does, he, does he fit that... Uh, I don't think he fit the homegrown player. What thing. age is he? What age is he, David? I think he's up uh, 25, 26, 27, maybe. I don't know. Nah. Um, but the, the Keller thing, I'd love to see Keller. I mean, he's doing, he, he's, he's Liverpool's FA Cup keeper this year, is he not? Uh, you know, he's getting game time. He's, he's, yeah, he's, against, he's been the cup keeper. Yeah. So I think, you know, I like a Wolves or a. I don't know. I, I, think, I think it's totally fanciful. Like the. You know, he's probably as a Liverpool backup keeper. He's he's probably on forty k. And as you say, any of those any of those teams that are in the Premiership or get into the Premiership could probably give him sixty or seventy k. And are happy throwing 20, 20 million, throw twenty million at a project. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, I think I, I can't see it. It's not it's not one that I can see. But I don't know why the rumours keep happening. Um, or or they haven't they haven't gone away. No, but, I mean you, you might be right. Maybe maybe. maybe. Maybe the twenty million price tag is just an inflated, you know, just Liverpool just see what they can get, and maybe maybe some of these Premier League clubs aren't willing to pay that kind of money for them. And if it is a case of well, we'll take eight, would Celtic pay that kind of money for them? We've never paid that. We've never paid that kind of money for a goalkeeper before. No, well, no, we haven't. We haven't. Bar Barcast was the only time that we we paid. <laughs> million, big, big money million. for a goalkeeper, and we see we see how that went. But I suppose the other way of it is. And it's, it's like, I suppose it's like buying a car. I used to buy runarounds. I used to buy a car for a grand and it would last you a year or two years. And then it was done. It was just completely done. And then I, I bought a more expensive car, but I got 14 years out of it. So if you were getting him at age 25 and it was going to cost you 8 million and you were getting 10 years out of him, that's that's probably 8 million that's that's well spent kind of thing. I just think it's a fanciful one, but I, I think it is. I think this is definitely Hart's last, last hurrah. This this next five months, I can't see any scenario where we we start next season with with Joe Hart. Um, I didn't actually know that his his family and all are still down south. So for for the best part of three years, he's been up there on his own, and that's probably not a situation that he wants to continue longer term as well. So it's an interesting one to see how it plays out, but. Um, yeah, well, we've got, you say, we've got three 
three or four days left of the window. I, th- I think I'll stick by my guns. I think we'll see two players coming in by deadline day, and I think it'll all happen on deadline day. Um, it will feel like a panic, regardless of whoever it is. Uh, but let's just hope it's it's somebody that can make a difference to this team. We've been on just about an hour, Terry. Um, not the best game to talk about today. We did get the three points, which is yes. the main thing, but we, we cannot allow that plaster to cover up a gaping wound that is this season. And we need to get the stitches on it quick. And hopefully, Brendan and... Next week's a big game, David. Play. Next week's a big game. Aberdeen away. We've we've got a really good record against them, but it is it is a challenging game. Um, we, we might we might have to deal with Mayovsky or Mayovsky might be playing for us next week. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I would take him. Aberdeen, Aberdeen's a good fixture because it, it's it's one where we know we're going to have to be on our metal, but it's also one that we we've got a really good record. And in the big games, in the big games, and I'm really probably talking about the the Rangers games and. The visit to Aberdeen, the visit to Tyne Castle. In those games where we've had to deliver, we've delivered. And my only hope is that on these bigger challenges that we're, we're able to keep doing that. My, my, see, if, see those games we lost at home. See the, the points the, the points lost at home. The points lost against St. Johnson. The points lost against Muller. Well, that's four. And the three points lost against Hearts. If we'd, if we'd got those three games, that is... That's an eight-point lead, nine-point lead. What was it? Yeah, seven points and two. That's a nine-point lead, and that's that's job done from my perspective. So it's it's those home games against those teams who we normally we normally beat. That's that's where we we've we've dropped the points, and it, it, it could well have happened again today. But four days of the window. Let's be positive. Six game unbeaten run. Um. Hopefully, beyond hope that when the team lineup goes up next week, there's there's a couple of new names in there, and they're they're people that we we feel are going to get us over the line in this this race. Absolutely, mate. Well, we'll call it quits there. Uh, thank you, Terry, for joining us. Obviously, Boise didn't manage to get the route of work, and hopefully, we can get that sorted because that's going to be a long night for him. Uh, we still got the internet going. Of course, you can always just go out to the pub. I'm sure plenty of internet and other things at the pub to keep himself entertained. Uh, we will be back tomorrow for the Sunday play at 11 o'clock with the usual suspects, I'm sure. Phil and Regan are plenty to see on the match uh, today and of course all the rumours, gossip and hearsay will be talking about all that. Obviously transfers and all that stuff. But um, thanks Terry for joining me again. Yes, uh, thank it's you always good to catch up with you mate. No see you problem, later. Mate. No Cheers. Uh, take care guys. Just Bye.